it was a conspiracy which took the life of your president. But Mr. Lane, who accuses the commission of playing fast and loose with the evidence, does not always allow facts to get in the way of his own theories. In Rush to Judgment, for example, he writes, the statements of eyewitnesses close to the president tended to confirm the likelihood that the shot came from the right and not from the rear. Well, Lane then quotes Associated Press photographer James Altkins and another eyewitness, Charles Brim, as giving testimony that would support the idea of a killer on the grassy knoll. Yet Mr. Altkins, as we saw Monday night, is entirely certain that all the shots came from behind, a fact that Mr. Lane does not mention. As for Mr. Brim, Eddie Barker discovered that he holds no brief, either for the grassy knoll theory or for the use of his words by Mark Lane. Well, now, some critics of the Warren Report have taken your testimony or interviews with you uh, to indicate that you thought the shots came from behind the fence over there. What about that? Well, uh, sir, it, it was not a number of critics. It was one critic, Mark Lane, who takes very great liberties with adding to my quotation. I never said that the, any shot came from here like I was quoted by Mr. Lane. Uh, Mr. Lane would like me to have positively identified the, what I saw fly over here as skull, although I told him I could not. I did not examine. I thought it was, but I could not. So he has added his interpretations to what I said, and uh, consequently that's where the story comes from, that, that I said that a shot came from up there. No shot came from up there at any time during the whole fiasco that afternoon. Nor are these the only examples of Mr. Lane lifting remarks out of context to support his theories. Perhaps the most charitable explanation is that Mark Lane still considers himself a defense attorney for Lee Harvey Oswald. And a defense attorney's primary duty is not to abstract truth, but to his client. Associated Press photographer James Alkin was actually looking toward the book depository. As I was getting ready to make some pictures why uh, I heard this noise. I thought it was a firecracker explosion. I just went ahead and made the picture which shows the president right after he was struck by a bullet. Struck in the neck, the first shot. And uh, this was uh, a picture that the Warren report later fixed as uh, being made two seconds after the shot was fired. And um, as they got in close to me, and I was prepared to make the picture. I had my camera almost at eye level. That's when the president was shot in the head. And uh, I do know that the president was still in an upright position, tilted, favoring Mrs. Kennedy. And at the time that he was struck by this blow to the head, it was so obvious that it came from behind. It had to come from behind because it caused him to bolt forward dislodging him from this depression in the seat cushion and already favoring Mrs. Kennedy, he automatically fell in that direction. You uh, have no thoughts about another assassin behind the fence or on the knoll? I've had a lot of people to contact me and that uh, they felt there was another person involved and in trying to get me to uh, verify either photographs they had or to uh, work out some information they felt they had come across to uh, substantiate the evidence uh, of uh, substantiate the fact that there was another assassin but at no time has any of this evidence proved to me beyond a shadow of a doubt that there was another assassin